There is so much that I can say in this video, but I want to keep it as short as I possibly can. But before I get started, I would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. And if it is in your heart to do, click on the Cash App, the Chime, or the PayPal link that's in the description box and support this channel. Today's topic is the purge has begun. The purge has begun. I find it quite interesting because many people that claim to not believe in God, they claim to not believe in the Bible, they claim to reject Christianity. And in some cases, many forms of religion that's connected or is based off of the Bible. But what I find interesting is many of these same people are now starting to believe in what they've been rejecting for years. Things that they passed off as being conspiracy theories. Things that we warned people about that's in the Bible, that's relating to living in the last days. There are people that argue and say that these are things that have always happened. But now these same people are starting to question, for example, why does it appear that the days are shortened? Time is moving so fast to the point where people can't help but to notice how fast the day is gone, how fast the week is gone, how fast a year has gone by. I heard a, a rapper this week question and said that it appeared that 2021 went by so fast, it appears to have been like maybe six months instead of a year. What was a year seems to be six months because time is rapidly moving by. And there's people that fall by the wayside. There's people that lose their minds. And there's people that become so stressed out to the point where they feel the need to take their own life because they feel within themselves they cannot keep up with the times. Because so much has been crammed and forced upon human beings on this planet. We deal with everyday life situations. We deal with politics. We deal with love and relationships. People are combating within themselves. Whether they are a male or a female. Then they deal with the bullying and the stereotypes. And it, people deal with so much force and pressure to the point they lose control of themselves, of their emotions, and even their rational or logical thinking. But I'm going to show you a scripture in the Bible where it predicts these times. A scripture that answers the question on why time seem to be going by so fast. The scripture is taken from the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. And I'll be reading from the 22nd to the 24th verse. And it reads as follows. And except those days 
should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's the 22nd chapter, or the, better yet, the 22nd verse. And I'll read that again. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, the elect are those people of Yah that worship and serve him, those that are saved, those that have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, the same ones that people scoff and scorn at, that refer to them as holy rollers or Bible thumpers, or say that they are crazy and believe in an unreal God. These are the elect of the Most High. But the Bible says, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And then the 23rd verse says, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it or not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, the elect, it would be almost impossible to deceive because the elects know the word of God. We are connected with the spirit of God. We have and is possessed with the spirit of God. So being connected, being one with the creator, we're given the privilege and the honor of knowing his will. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that rests, rule, and abide within us reveals to us what's real and what's fake. But according to the word, things are going to become so bad to the point where if it be possible, the very elect will be deceived by these false Christs and false prophets, these people that come on the scene that may perform miracles, things that may appear to be right, but the end is destruction. So while everyone else is following that broad and wide path where everyone travels, the very elect are the few to resist and will tell you something is not right. If you look at something as simple as elections and how so many of us had warned what would happen if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris was in office and I even said that they are extremely evil and I kept stressing how evil they were. Now that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is in office, the evil that they do is now manifest. People are suffering. People are losing their minds and losing themselves. Families are divided. And families are burying families. But this is all a part of the purge. The purge is ridding the earth of undesirables. Ridding the earth of 
undesirables. And don't get it wrong. Some of the undesirables are people of the most high. It was their time. It was in what they call their cards. I'm going to read a scripture to you and show you how the purge is actually happening. Now, there are two different types of purges. There's the purge of man and then there's the purge of God. The purge of man is what we are dealing with today. These back-to-back -back variants of a virus that is unseen. We've masked, we take vaccines, there's booster shots, they social distance, they close, uh, close schools, people have lost their jobs and their livelihoods, but yet people are still dying. They're still testing positive. The purge has begun. Yes, people have always lost their lives. They've always died. But now we're dealing with a spiritual purge being manifested in the physical. Clearing the earth of undesirable. And again, an undesirable is not always a bad person. An undesirable could be a person that is of value to the word of God. But because of the fact that they are in opposition to this earthly rule, this demonic system, this demonic system want them gone. So now we're dealing with different diseases and viruses and sicknesses. And this is only the beginning of sorrow. Expect more to happen. But I'm going to read a scripture to you taken from the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter reading the fourth verse. And it reads as follows. And there went out another horse that was red. And pay close attention to this. And power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. I repeat that. That they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, this is a prophecy in the book of Revelation where one of the apocalyptic horses, the red horse, was given power, was given authority to take peace from the earth where people would kill one another. And we see that every day in the media. And regardless of what law enforcement done, uh, does, or regardless of what the military does, they can call in the military, they can call in the National Guards, um, the police force, people can arm themselves. The only thing that's happening then, because I'm going to tell you, when it comes to God's will being fulfilled, he can use anyone and anything to fulfill that goal or that mission. So we're living in times where so many people, this world is so divided that people would take out their own mother. They would take out their own father, their own kinfolk, their own wives, their own children, their own mothers and fathers. So that red horse was given authority 
to take peace from the earth. So regardless of how much they talk peace, as a matter of fact, the Bible says when they say peace and safety, then come sudden destruction. So they can talk peace all they want, but God's will will be done. I'll read that scripture again. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. See, the purge has begun. So what we see in the news where people are being killed right in front of you in broad open daylight, that purge has begun. Another scripture will be taken from Revelation, the 8th chapter, reading the first to the 13th verse. And it reads as follows. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. Now, try to visualize what's being read here, because this is all being done in the spirit realm going to be manifested in the natural. The third verse says, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And it was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So all of your prayers, those of you that felt that your prayers are unheard, that God had forgotten about you, or God is not listening to you, this is God now answering your prayers. Okay, because a lot of times your prayers may not appear to be answered because God has another plan for you. We have to go through something in this earth. This is a way to test our loyalty, test how faithful we are to the creator. No, it's not that he ignores us or he does not hear us. God is saving your prayers as ammunition against your enemy. And I'm going to read that third verse again. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the hand of the angels. The fifth verse says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angel and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared them to sound. This is the purge. This is the most high purging the earth. This is God's wrath being poured out upon the wicked and the disobedient. The seventh verse says, the first angel sounded and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, 
and the third part of the sea became blood. This is God's purge. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the mountain, the fountains of water. The 11th verse says, And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Now, Wormwood means bitter or poisonous. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. In other words, it became poisonous or bitter. And the Bible says, And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter or poisonous. I'll read that 11th verse again. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. Look at how God is venging or avenging those that suffered, those that died at the hands of the wicked. The wicked now is pain for the wicked deeds that they have done on this earth. Things that they have called or named to be conspiracy theories. Now this is God acting out against them and all of their wicked and evil deeds. Those that aborted unborn babies. A lot of those a lot of those spirits that have died, those humans that did, were not given a chance to live are at the altar of God crying out, saying, how long will you avenge those that took our lives from the womb? The Bible says they were given white robes and told to wait a while until their fellow servants and brothers are killed. In other words, are purged from the earth. So, this is God venging those that have done evil. Or better yet, he's taking vengeance upon those that have done evil in the world. And this is how he's doing it. But when these things come... And when they act out so quickly, they act so fast, you don't have time to think. In many cases, they're not even going to have time to repent because their emotions, their true emotions will come out. And instead of repenting, turn away from their wickedness, they in turn will curse God. They will curse God because of the wrath that they now have to face. You reap what you sow. So now you're sowing, or better yet, reaping the corruption that you committed, the judgment that is upon you. You reap that because you've sown so much evil in the earth. i read that 12th verse again. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, in other words, it's going to be pitch black, no light. And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. 
The 13th and final verse says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa. In other words, this is an angelic warning to you that what you've just experienced and had to go through was nothing compared to what's coming. In other words, this is, again, only the beginning of what you have to suffer because of your wickedness. It says, saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. In other words, those trumpets which are yet to sound with judgment following, you now have to deal with these warnings of woe. These angelic warnings of woe. This is the purge of God. This is God purging the earth of evil, of evil men, of evil children, taking vengeance on those that have done wrong, regardless of what that wrong or that evil was, you will pay. Any ungodly work that's unrepentant, that you refuse to turn away from, that you feel is a conspiracy theory, or you don't need God because many men view themselves as being God. Even females view themselves as God. And they don't need God. But when that judgment comes, their true emotions, even those that claim that they trust and believe in God, but yet is in opposition against God, the Bible says that inside, Outside, they are like polished tombs. In other words, they look good, they sound good, but inside, they are full of dead men's bones. So those of you that's even faking religion, that's faking being saved or being righteous, your day is coming when you will be tested. And when these come, when this judgment comes upon you, Instead of you crying out and worshiping the Most High or turn away from your evil, you would in turn curse him. Because things will be happening so fast that you don't have time to repent. Your true nature will come out. Your true feelings will come out. And you will be destroyed. It's easy to talk about the white man being destroyed. Your slave master being destroyed. But much of Israel will be destroyed. So I didn't mean to go this long. I'm going to cut it short. And maybe I'll do a part two to this. And add some more information in there. So feedback. Tell me what you think. But the purge has begun. So do not be surprised. What comes in 2022. We're in for the ride of your life. And many are not going to make it out of 2022. And not so much as because of these, these, this pandemic. But because of the stress and the depression. And those trying to run and escape the judgment of God. But yet, when you decide to take your own life. You're running right into the hands of judgment. Because after you leave this plane of existence, now you face judgment. And your judgment is not what you think. You think you escaped this and you want peace and you want to rest, but yet you will find no rest. Even when you take yourself out. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe. Until next time. 
I'm fearless.